Let's talk a little bit about life in Colombia. So if you're considering leaving the United States or wherever you're from and going to live in Colombia, I can help you with two places. I lived in Bogota, but that was a long time ago, but I still clearly remember the city Bogota. And I lived in Medellin. I traveled around to a lot of other cities, to the coast and other cities in the interior in Colombia. It's a beautiful country. The people are really friendly. It's one of the things about, well, in general, the Latino culture, people are, they come across more friendly, maybe in the US, uh, Canada. From my perspective now, looking at it a little bit more objectively, I, I don't want Latinos to take this the wrong way because I really do think they have a great culture. But I think they would also admit in some ways, it's part of their culture and they just learn to be friendly this way, um, you know, with giving a kiss uh, when they greet. A lot of people do that in a lot of cultures, always shaking hands and, and even the things they say and their physical closeness. After a while, you realize that a lot of it is, is superficial, but I don't want that to be taken in the wrong way because I'd still prefer that people were friendly rather than not friendly or rude. And that, that's the way it comes across. And that's what happens. A lot of times Latinos think that Americans or people from not non-Latino countries are cold. Uh, they'll say that we're cold because of the way, the way we speak or the way we act when we might just think we're being maybe more direct or sincere and that's just the way we feel. So Latinos will always try to make you feel welcome. Not always, but most of the time. It's a really uh, nice aspect of their culture. I could talk a little bit about Bogota. Bogota is up high in elevation. I remember when I first went there, I was a lot younger and I was in great shape. I used to run a lot and I remember getting there and feeling out of breath. Uh, just from like climbing a flight of stairs. But it was because there was less oxygen in the air. Uh, it's amazing. You think, how do the people live like this? But you just get used to it. And they, they live with it their whole lives. Their bodies adapt. Some people say that you get used to it in just a few weeks or so. I really noticed that I was finally completely accustomed to this lack of oxygen after like four months. I would notice that I would just suddenly feel out of breath almost doing nothing, which was really strange. I was only in my 20s. I was in really good shape. I would just feel out of breath for no reason. That went away after about four months. So when I hear that people say they're gonna go uh, train or like the people who climb Mount Everest will go to the base camp and stay there for a week to get used to the climate, to the elevation, I'm surprised, I think. And they do it, but a lot of them don't do it, right? A lot of them fail because I think how how can you do that? How Your body, it takes a while for your body to adapt. It took mine a while to adapt to the high elevation. Um, but what's interesting is once you do adapt, then like I would come back to the States and visit and even be here in the States for a while and then go back to wherever, to a high elevation, because I was at a high elevation in Peru too. And I didn't have to readapt. My body was then used to it. That was kind of interesting. Bogota is a great big flat city. It's up high, but it's a flat city. Um, now it has lots of different transportation. The people speak Spanish really well there. They're considered to be a little more serious. They use usted a lot more in Bogota than tú. You know, you have tú and usted for you in the language. They use usted a lot more there, even for their friends and everybody. Um, not that they never use tú compared to other parts of Colombia and other Spanish speaking countries. It's a nice city, but it's cool. You know, the other Colombians will say, ay, que frío, hace frío en Bogota. They'll say it's cold. A Scandinavian person would say that the weather in Bogota is really nice. So it really depends on your perspective. I guess it's somewhere, I haven't checked what the average temperature is, but I remember it was kind of like always in the 60s. At night it would feel colder, like maybe the high 40s or low 50s, and then during the day it would be in the 60s, low 70s maybe. I'm talking Fahrenheit, so this is in Celsius. The high would be like 21, and the low would be 10, 9 degrees. Um, that would be Celsius. I didn't like that aspect of it too much, but it certainly wasn't so freezing cold, but you, you get used to it. The air is cool, but because you're right on the equator, and you're high up in elevation, this is what you notice at high elevation, because I grew up at basically at sea level, at like 100 feet over sea level, above 
above sea level. Uh, so you don't realize that when you're close to sea level, you have all of the atmosphere between you and the rays of the sun. And you think, yeah, but the atmosphere on a clear day, does it matter? Yeah, it does. There's all these particles in the atmosphere that are kind of blocking the rays of the sun and also being at a norther, a more northern latitude. When you're on the equator and you're high up, so you have less of the atmosphere between you and the rays of the sun, right? The atmosphere is thinner because you're higher up in, in the mountains. You actually feel, even though it's a cool day, you feel the rays of the sun on your skin like start to burn really fast, like in 15 seconds. And so it's weird, it could be a cold day, you could feel pretty cool, especially you notice it if you, I would test it, it was kind of weird being there. You stand in the shade, so imagine there's like a tree. Yeah, exactly, there's like a tree on a sunny day and you stand in the shade of the tree and you will start to feel cold. You step out into the sun and it starts to warm up your body on your clothes, that's nice, but if the, if the sun hits your skin in a short period of time, it starts to burn your skin. And like, it doesn't start to warm up your skin, it starts to feel like it's like burning it like kind of gets uncomfortable after just a short period of time so it's that's that was a, a strange experience there in the in the country now another thing is so in Bogota you're up high well I remember one of the first when I first went to Bo, uh, to Colombia I arrived in Bogota and then immediately the next day took a bus down to this place called Melgar and Colombians will know this place the ones from Bogota and around the area Melgar is like this little vacation town. It has lots of little hotels with pools. It has some bigger places too. I, I can only imagine that now, all these years later, it must be uh, well developed. But to go there, you leave Bogota. And when you leave Bogota, you're out of, you're starting to go out of Bogota like within 15 or 20 minutes if there's no traffic. So I, we were on a bus and the bus starts going down this hill, like going back and forth. And the driver was driving like crazy. Um, but gets down to uh, what they call Tierra Caliente, hot land. Um, the, so, and it is literally, it just starts to get warm right away. But that happens within about 45 minutes to an hour and I'm used to driving from New Jersey all the way down to Florida to feel this change in temperature maybe say, say in February or March it could be so cold in the winter up in the north but then nice and warm down in Florida but you have to drive 24 hours or more to get to where it's gonna be nice and warm in Colombia it happens in an hour you go from uh, the the cool area and that's why people will go there for a short weekend vacation they'll go down to uh, um, uh, to Melgar or these different areas and stay at a little hotel for the weekend. Can you imagine that? You can go and have a nice, hot, warm vacation, uh, swimming in swimming pools, and then go back to Bogota where it's cool, where you wouldn't swim in a swimming pool outside. It's too cool for that, that fast. And so it's a really popular area. So that was kind of a surprise to me to do that. So I, But I really enjoyed that. That's one of the small little things about Bogota that's kind of nice. There's lots of little towns nearby that people will take side trips to. I think we'll we'll stay with that for today and maybe in the next conversation we'll talk about um, Medellin because I, I lived in Medellin even longer. I got to know that area even better and that was not so long ago. I look forward to reading your comments and if you like this topic, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I look forward to talking to you about the next topic.